business. And when the water is turned to blood, the, the sea is turned to blood, and uh, all the things that are going to take place when these vials of the, the full wrath of God are going to be poured out upon mankind. And uh, all because of their, uh, their following of the devil and the following of the beast and their following the false prophet. And as they, as they go about to follow him, uh, his... His total aim, the, the, the aim of the devil, is to war against God and the things of God, and so he does. Now, friend, we face battles as believers. We face battles every day that because the devil never uh, gives up. He, don't, he never uh, settles down. He never gets uh, tired of harassing God's people. And so we fight a battle with, uh, with the devil, with the forces of hell, with the old flesh every day. And if we, if we win those battles, it's because God is in us and God helps us. And so we need to rely. I've learned to get up of a day and ask for the help of the Lord uh, to help me through the day. And, and it, sometimes it's just cry, I just cry out like the psalmist David, help, Lord. I need your help, and God will help me. And so as we battle in this life, as we go through life and as we battle, uh, then, friend, we must certainly know that the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. And as it comes down to the end time, to the very last battle uh, until the end of the, of the millennial reign, the very last battle on earth uh, between mortal man and, and as, as, or as the devil, he comes on the scene and he draws all the armies of the world against, against uh, you know, God there in Jerusalem. So they all come to battle against him. Now, friend, we know who the winner is because we've already read the final chapter. It's God. But the carnage and the turmoil and the uh, things that happen uh, during this time of the last battle is something, friend, that's uh, just, uh, just hard to fathom in your mind. But you just got to take the Word of God for what it is and believe it uh, for what it is. And when it says the blood will run to the horse's bridle, then that's what's going to happen. The blood of men is going to run to the horse's bridle. Now, uh, as, we, uh, as we read on here, let's read these last few verses and then we'll be through. As the, and the sixth angel, verse number 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the, the, the Euphrates River, you know, the, the ancient Euphrates River, for 2,000 years, well, no, 6,000 years, that river has run. It had, they, they say the head of the Euphrates River is in the same vicinity that uh, the Garden of Eden is, somewhere in, somewhere in there. It's where the Garden of Eden's at. And so the first battle with mankind, or the, when the battle started with mankind in between God, was in the Garden of Eden. Uh, when, uh, you know, when Adam, or when Eve was there in the garden and the devil came to her and deceived her, and that's where sin entered in, and, and in that battle the... Uh, you know, the, the hill of Christ was bruised. Well, friend, I, I'm here to tell you tonight that the battle is going to rage in, in that same vicinity again. And the great Euphrates River, uh, from beginning to end, and sometimes it's miles wide and uh, very deep in places, uh, you know, 30 feet deep, they say 10 to, 10 to 30 feet deep in most places, but it's going to dry up. Now you say, now preacher, how can it dry up? Well, God turned the water on to start with, and he can certainly turn it off. And that, that major river, when it dries up, it, it presents a natural road uh, for the, for the uh, kings of the east to, the, to come there to Jerusalem. It heads, heads right to there. So they can all come up through there. So uh, as the kings of the east, uh, as they're prepared, they come prepared for battle. Now, I've heard all kinds. Now, I just believe the Bible. Just let me tell you. I believe the Bible, what it says. And, and how God is going to do all that he's going to do, I can't answer that question. <coughs> I've read after some people that think there's going to be a great nuclear attack on the world from, uh, from all the nuclear weapons that are in the world, that those are all going to be, uh, you know, all going to be said against uh, Israel and against Jerusalem there in the Battle of Armageddon, and that that's what's going to cause some of the things here to happen. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. Uh, I believe God's going to speak it and it's going to happen. I don't believe God has to use man-made things to do his, you know, to do his will. However, he can. 
Uh, but, but what happens is that they come up to battle again in, in the last battle. They come up to battle against God in Jerusalem. And verse number 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Uh, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to, get, to battle uh, of that great day of God Almighty. So they're going to gather together against God Almighty and these, these frogs these uh, uh, that come out of the dragon in the beast's mouth, they, get, they come out as demons and I believe that's what they are. And they go about to deceive kings. And they you explain to them, you know, we got to all get together here. we got to draw together. So the, the, this is going to be a true world war. This is going to be a global war, this, uh, this battle of Armageddon is going to be. But it's all going to center around that one little spot there uh, in the Middle East. And as the, the armies of the world come together uh, against that, then they're going to bring all their heavy artillery and, and uh, everything they've got. And they're going to, they're going to come and and believe that to battle against the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon, that place of battle, that, pr that place of great destruction, that, uh, you know, that place there where uh, certainly, as we've already read, the, the blood will run to the horse's bridle. And friend, that's going to be a terrible thing. But he says here, uh, Behold, I come as a thief. Now, Jesus, before that all takes place, you know that, uh, because we've been studying here for some time, that before any of this takes place, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to rapture the church out and we're going to go to be with him. I won't see this. You won't see this unless God lets us look from heaven, which I, I you know, I, I don't think that'll happen. But uh, anyway, that's... Uh, if we won't be here because we've all been born again by the grace of God. So you and I won't be a part of this. We'll never experience the wrath of God. I had a preacher one time, I was in church, and, and I didn't like it, and I still don't like it, and I, if I had it to do over again, I'd do the same thing. Uh, but but he, we were sitting there in church, and this visiting preacher would come along, and he was preaching, and he said, I think every, every preacher ought to, ought to spend some time in hell. And that's what he said. Now, I got my family up, and we walked out the door. And, and in a sense, he, you know, he was trying to say that, that we, we need to know what it's all about. Well, if I did that, I'd be, it would be going completely against the Word of God when God says His children will not, will not suffer the wrath of God. And, and so, you know, I left on that because I know that God's people, we, we see the judgment of God in our lives. We find his hand upon us in chastisement, but the full wrath of God you and I don't, uh, don't experience and won't experience. And so when all this takes place, you and I will be in heaven with the Lord, but terrible, terrible things are going to happen here, in this, here on this earth. Now, uh, at this place called Armageddon, then this last, this last vial that's to be poured out, verse number 17, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. That last angel uh, pours out his vial upon the, in the air. And a voice from the temple, being, being the Father himself, cries out, It is done. When Christ died on the cross of Calvary, what did he say? It is finished. Salvation's work was complete. And now here when... Uh, when all things, you know, when all things come to a head here at the Battle of Armageddon, when this last angel pours out his vial, then that means, friend, it's over with. It's coming to an end quickly, and he says, this is it, this is it, it's done. So, uh, verse number 18. <coughs> this is what happens. There were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as the... Such as was not since man were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Now, we know what an earthquake can do. We know how that it can tear, uh, you know, tear a city apart. We know how it can cause much destruction and many, many lives by these, you know, uh, category, whatever it is on the Richter scale, seven, eight, 
nine whatever those extreme points are that they can go to, and I can't uh, remember it right now, but they can cause terrible things to happen. You remember the last one and that happened out in California when the, uh, the Bay Bridge, when part of that was uh, collapsed because of an earthquake. And all of these things, all of these things that we have seen thus far, this earthquake that's going to hit this earth is going to be far worse than anything man has ever seen. It's going to be so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of the wrath of God. So the full wrath of God is going to be poured out. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be uh, an earthquake that's going to divide the great city. Babylon is going to divide that great city. And all the cities are going to be divided and shook apart. New York City will be flat. Uh, those cities in, in, in this country that have their high-rise built, they're all going to be flattened out by this great earthquake that's going to happen. So listen here. And every island... Uh, fled away and the mountains were not found it's going to be it's going to be so bad this earthquake is going to be so bad that it is going to shake the mountains to the ground you say oh, preacher that ain't that can't happen listen the bible says it's going to happen i believe it's going to happen these mountains that, that god formed do you think he can't shake it pick it up and shake it so hard that it won't you know that they'll all fall down i believe god can i believe god will and, and so this, as the angel has poured out his vial into the air, uh, the lightnings, the thunderings, all that takes place, a fierce earthquake <coughs> that's going to shake cities apart and that's going to cause the mountains to be uh, cast down. And it is, you know, uh, think about the water. What did it do to the water? When those great tsunamis hit all over the world and, and uh, you know, you say, well, how can all that happen? Listen, God made it. And it would be nothing for God to put his great finger on it and just shake it real hard and for these things to come to pass. We sometimes, I believe, we forget who we are and what we are. Uh, we're man, and you, you stand out at night on a clear night, and you look out into that vast universe in space, and you see how big that is, and then you think about you, and you think about how little you are. And I think about how little I am, friend, and we're just a speck. We're just a, a piece of dust, but God loves us. Amen. God God loves us. He made us. He created us. He created man. And yet we look and, and see that, uh, that uh, man is not that great after all. That all the accomplices of man just don't mean a whole lot when it comes to God and the things of God. So we need to humble ourselves and be humble before God and realize, God, you made it. God, you can do what you want to. And no manner of anything man comes up with is going to defeat God. Now, while all of this is happening... The last verse here says, And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. <coughs> and what did men do? Men blasphemed God because of the plague of, of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now you look at what all's happened. They've had boils. They've had the water turned to blood. They've had earthquakes. They've had thunders. They've had... Uh, all kinds of, of, of uh, things that have happened to them besides the previous things that have gone on. And the, and the last thing that comes is a hailstorm with, with uh, hailstones weighing a hundred talents. Let's see, how many talents? I missed that. Weigh, as the weight of a talent, and a talent weighs about a hundred pounds. Now you imagine standing out and out in, outside and watching hailstones come that, that weigh a hundred pounds. Now that's... Uh, Closest thing I could, you know, I could come up with right away was a bag of that sacred concrete mitt. Weighs 60 pounds. And that's what I thought of. Now, you imagine uh, that be the smallest one that falls from the heavens. You look what carnage and what damage. Anything left standing, that's going to that's gonna destroy. And men everywhere will, will uh, you know, will experience that plague except those that have been saved by God's grace here now or those that have never heard the gospel, that believe the everlasting gospel, and the testimony of the 144,000, everyone else is going to experience the wrath of God. You'd think men would believe, wouldn't you? You'd think they would believe when all this was going on that they would believe the truth, but they blaspheme God. Even in those last days when all's going you know, like it is, they blaspheme God. And friend, you say, well, 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 I will believe. Listen, if you don't believe today, you know, people that don't believe today would not believe in that day either. And so, friend, the Word of God's true. The Word of God's very plain about 
of what it says about salvation and what it says about what God's going to do in the end time. And when it all comes to pass, you and I will be in heaven with the Lord. But man, I'm, I feel sorry for those that are going to be left here because after that, it'll be too late. And so uh, as we go, you know, as we go through life and we, we see people, God help us to realize that that person may be going to hell. And, and before that, if the rapture takes place, they're going to suffer all these things. And you say, well, now, uh, if it was me, I wouldn't ever take the mark of the beast. Well, you would. You say, well, preacher, you just told me what happened if we take the mark of the beast. Well, uh, the Bible tells us that, that there will be such a strong delusion sent that if it were possible, even the very elect of God would be deceived by the works of the devil and by his power and by his influence. See, there are these, these uh, devils that, that are going to go about and these false prophets that are going to go about will be able to, to imitate uh, the works of Christ and they'll be able to do miracles. Uh, they'll be able to do, you know, by the power of the devil, they'll be able to, to do miracles and, and do things that'll make people believe in them, yet they will not believe the true God. How sad that's going to be. We'll continue on the next time, probably after Christmas, before we get back uh, to chapter number 17. Uh, but when we get there, amen, the, will, the Lord will continue to bless us and help us. I'm looking forward to uh, all of this to be behind, to be honest with you, and for us to be in the millennial reign with Christ. Seven years is not that long. And, and, and God ends it all by his, by his word. He ends it all. And then, uh, friend, he sets up his millennial reign. Then at the end of the millennial reign, the devil's turned loose and he goes about again to deceive the nations. And, uh, and even in a perfect environment, men will still listen to the lie of the devil. I, I, you say, how does all that happen? I don't know. But God in heaven knows. Get, one thing is going to happen, though. You and I are safe in the arms of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Blessed, I pray, help us, God, that we always uh, stand true to thee and faithful to you. And God, I pray, Father, that you just help us, Lord, to live as if you're coming back today. And Lord, let us let our light so shine before men that we might, they might see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. And Lord, I pray that this season, Lord, this may be the last Christmas we ever get to celebrate down here in this earth. <clears throat> but God, we pray if it is, if the rapture takes place, God help us to be faithful till you come. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. <coughs>